Luke from Rock. Thank you so much for filling in this week, which is the last of last round of Terra's uh, chemotherapy. Um, yes. She officially gets that taken care of. That's done. She's recovering because she had that evil orb at the end. Um, then uh, for the next few weeks, she's going to get her strength back. She's going to get surgery in July. But for right now, y'all have been great. You and and Dominic and Gretchen and everybody yeah. who who helped out through this because, yeah. So I was still might need you a few more times after the surgery, but fun. then. I can't I can't speak for everyone, but I can say we were all happy to help out in a situation like this. It also just proves Tara's a trooper. And not only for everything she's been going through, but also to deal with so many of these nonsensical stories for so many years. God. We like to think of this as giving her a break. <laughs> so, yes. All right. Let's see. I say as I do myself for the evening. Well, once again, <laughs> to remind everyone, Luke, uh, he uh, does... Music, reviews, and news, and takes over on the YouTubes. He also does Twitch. Lots, lots of different stuff. It's very so. Rocked on YouTube, everybody. If you haven't checked it out yet, rocked. R-O-C-K-E-D on YouTube. There should be a link in the description of yeah. the video when it comes up. So. All right, let's get that intro rolling. Here we go. Each week, yeah, Radio Dead Air audience go out the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong? Um, where are we starting? Oh, we are starting with the YouTube shit. Because. Hey, hey that sounds right. Yeah, damn. The th it's a topic here at this house every day, so let's do it. I, you know, it is, it is both the, being, doing this YouTube shit has both been a blessing and a curse over the, mm -hmm. the Years and years and years. No, that that's an accurate way to describe it. Even YouTube would say would say that. So, and it, it has twisted people in some very stupid, stupid ways. What ways, you ask? Why? Oh, I don't know. Breaking into bush fucking gardens to hop in the alligator pit to film some shit. For the interwebs. Whatever you got away with, you did not even come close to getting the comeuppance you deserved for doing that, sir. Not even close. Man's accused of breaking uh, into a Florida theme park, jumping into an alligator enclosure, and filming a video for social media. Dangerous stunt that authorities said led to his arrest. Uh, police in Tampa Bay said Jacob uh, Percival, 20. Good God. Uh... uh Hop defense. What have we done to this next generation? We've ruined them. I I don't know, but I'm looking at the mugshot. I just want to backhand that guy. It's like, you, okay, you obviously didn't learn anything by this if you still have a little smirk on your face. <laughs> oh, he's going to put that on the Instagrams. Absolutely. He's going to make a video about it. He's totally going to make a video about that. Or he say, Percival entered the enclosure while one of the people with him recorded him. Onlookers can see uh, in a video posted on social media. Showing him inside the enclosure with some shouting at him to get out. It was dangerous to get that close to the reptiles. But the incident went viral online. It's unclear whether he has legal representation. I'm have you ever been to Bush Gardens? I have not. Okay. It's a nicer amusement park. Mm -hmm. It's not one of the rundown ones. It's not one of the old ones, like some of those old Six Flags that are just barely hanging on by duct tape. This is a nicer one. This is one of the few things Florida actually can get right is the amusement parks. And you're pulling this? Especially with those gators? Uh, all right. I used to live in... I've mentioned this before. Same. <laughs> and in my apartment complex, you could walk out on the patio. There was a little lake out mm -hmm. back. You walk out on the patio, and uh, there was uh, just alligators. Yep. Just there. And they have yeah. all they have to deal with it there is just a sign that says "keep the fuck away from them, keep your dogs on a leash" because there are alligators in the pond. That's the sign we had at our apartment complex that I lived at. Yep. What nope. else you gonna do? No stray animals in that co none. Oh. In that complex. 
No. And I know these things, I have been not that close, but I've been just every day looking at them. These are goddamn dinosaurs. They are. They're actually, they're aggressive dinosaurs too. They're not the nice ones. No. Either. Uh, there's a, I just, there, there's a reason for the term lizard brain. And this YouTube comment creator has one. Yes. Clearly. Goodness. Uh, not all, I'm also jumping over the fence of this park. Those fences are not like the chain link fence you have in the backyard. No. So this guy was, this guy must've been scaling some stuff to get in there. And then into the alligator park just to film something. Twenty years. What I can't. What is? What's even the CPM on on doing shit on like TikTok? Oh, yeah. Uh, for TikTok, especially YouTube, you already know is bad enough. TikTok is worse, and you already have to have the follower fan base. Like you have enough followers to get monetization for it. I can't even imagine how many full views you would have to make to even see a profit off something like that. That explains this. Because if you need to get followers, the fast way is to jump into... You an idiot? The alligator. We have ruined this generation coming after us. Uh, the young generation saw so many people, like, you know, in, like, the golden age of YouTube. The young kids that saw that, not what we were going up with, the young kids saw, that can be our job. And then they grew up aiming for that, and this is their way to how to do it. This is how. Uh, eighty-five hundred dollar bod, by the way. Oh yeah, he's not getting eighty-five hundred dollars through TikTok in a month. Not a chance. No way. The internet. Uh, the internet. Uh, <laughs> all right. And Nick, next, uh, final thing while you load that, the fact that he still has all his fingers after getting that close to Gators. Lucky man. Next up, we got video. <laughs> I don't even understand what the fuck happened here, but we can enjoy it together. You can only yeah. get away from the day. Um, okay. Up and... I think I heard about this. Yeah. I didn't see the video, but I think I've heard about so, this. So, uh, an Illinois man been charged with theft after allegedly stealing a backhoe and driving about 10 miles to catch a flight at an airport. Deputies in Williamson County say they were alerted to the alleged theft. There it is. Um, On May 18th, following a call about a suspicious backhoe found parked in the uh, Veterans uh, Airport of Southern Illinois. Ugh. A few moments later, the owner of the backhoe arrived on the scene. I identified the equi equipment as belonging to his company. Um, deputies reviewed security footage from the airport, which showed the suspect arriving in the backhoe, parking, and walking across the lot to the airport lobby while carrying a guitar case. That was the part I read, and I, I was like, who the fuck would, who the, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I also just love that the lower third tagline, no Uber, take the backhoe. That's up. Uh, I don't care who thought that was a good idea. Uh, oh, oh. Suspect was later identified as Timothy Begott of Carbondale. He has been charged with a felony count of theft in excess of $10,000. The suspect was being held on a $40,000 bond, which means he couldn't make bail. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh, just what? <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, did it say how old he was? No. Okay. Carbondale's, uh, I know where Carbondale is. It's not far from St. Louis. Not that far. It's a college town. Southern Illinois University. These are college kids in that town and then nothing else for miles and miles. So that most likely was, uh, drink all day, sleep all night college kid or vice versa, sleep all day, drink all night. And been running i've had to run late to a flight before in a panic it's miserable i never once thought any means necessary for my vehicle choice though how also how fast do backhoes go not very 30 miles an hour gonna, maybe right max and uh, that's what i'm thinking like how did he get it there because there's no airport right next to the farm so he had to put that on major roads and stuff right this is this is kind of dude just 
when I have to catch a flight, oh shit, we co we have like I got like shit set up. I know when we're doing this. Yeah. I've got the appointment. You got the the car coming to get us and all this. Being made, all this shit. I I the process. You know, we get there at like hour and a half before. This guy's just like, well, I don't know how I'm getting there. Well, I'll steal this thing. Bye. Oh wait, forgot my guitar. Let me go grab that. Hey there, Delilah singing motherfucking ass. The guitar's in the shotgun, like propped up. He's like setting it up for like his own little story. I I, I will say this though. What I, I can't imagine that was his backhoe. That farmer is mad. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, uh, you steal something like that. That's more expensive than most cars. A backhoe? Those things get up there in price. That guy is mad. What what did you think was gonna like that's the thing. That it's like, well, it'll be fun. Like, do you yeah. know the cameras everywhere these days? Also, he's not like running in no. or like in a hurry. No. He's just casually strutting in. So was he really in that big of a hurry to catch his flight? Really? If I'm running late to a flight, I am sprinting. And I don't run ever, you know? You're good. Uh, cheap. And now and now not only that, he can't get uh felony count theft of excess of ten thousand dollars. That's brutal. That is Your not going away in jail, and you ain't flying yeah. nowhere no more. Oh heck no. Not out of that airport for sure. They know you, you're backhoe. You don't even have a name anymore. <laughs> they just call you backhoe at that airport and they know you. Uh the next one is uh that's <laughs> some more travel ma'am. I I used to, you know, I've been around since the very dawn of the GPS era. I used to call the damn thing the talkie box, and I I was so the early ones would lie to you. They would tell you to <laughs> nice. turn places, and there's no fucking road there. There's just trees. You're like, they're trying to exist. kill us. Um, yeah. So this one, I I kind of feel a little sympathy here. But I also feel like maybe, maybe you need to ease off the vape while you're driving. GPS mistake Whoa. took a 60-year-old driver to the Canadian border where he's arrested with 400 pounds of cannabis and more than $600,000 in his car. 60-year-old American so driver. No. That is so much. He was arrested last week after he took a wrong turn and ended up at the Canadian border. That's a Bugs Bunny bit, isn't it? <laughs> that left left turn at Albuquerque. Isn't that the exact setup for that? Well, Canadian uh, uh, police, police had made news release that Andrew Lee Toppingberg was following GPS coordinates that were entered incorrectly when he mistakenly ended up at the border lineup for Canada's Rainbow Bridge border crossing in Niagara Falls. Uh, uh, he was taking it to the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, this keeps getting worse. Tobinberg of Dustin uh, of Tustin, California, was subject to an inspection because he did not have his passport with him. Oh, that's Michigan. the least of your problems right now. The least. They found 399 pounds of cannabis during the inspection, valued between uh, 250,000 to 500,000. They also found, found more than $600,000 in cash. Drugs and the money were located throughout the car. The, uh, Cannabis in vacuum packed containers in the cache separated into bundles that were concealed in a safe, a suitcase, a lockable case. Okay. Even even Walter White and Breaking Bad didn't drive around with the cash in his car. I know we have I I there's a weird effect of relying on the GPS. I used to be, I for for a living, I used to drive to people's houses on site to repair computers. And I had to call them and get directions written down. And I learned how to get places and about where I was. But the whole Southeast, like this big, big wide area I was around. Um, then the GPS has started happening. And now I realize I'm not really paying attention to where the hell I am anymore. Same. I'm just like, you, Absolutely. you tell me where to go. You, yeah. you go, you, you. I, I can understand this. However... Mm -hmm. You would think after the first, the few signs that were going, Canadian border, be prepared right. to stop. Toronto, 70 miles, you know, something like that. You would think something would, some fucking thing would click. That, 
And that sign in the image too, the banner image, Rainbow Bridge to USA, no commercial. How do you see that? It's uh, That's not the first one. You have to know something's up because you would have to see them everywhere along the border. And then you just have stacks and stacks of cash and pot. It filled up in the back seat, in the trunk, under the seats. Ugh. Someone, that's, I can tell you, just a gut instinct is telling me if he's driving around with it like that, all that money, I don't think that was his. Yeah. I think he was. He was, was he on an escape mission? I Do you think, think that's what one was? I think he was on a delivery. And uh, <laughs> they picked the wrong guy. Man. They, they picked well, the absolute wrong dude. Okay, if that guy, if that wasn't his, and he was on a delivery, and now whoever it was is out six hundred k, six hundred k cash, and that much pot to sell, boy, that delivery man better hope he stays in jail because he's gonna be in trouble. Okay, and I put him what? down, Andrew. What? Need you to drive this from point A to point B. Can you do that? Yeah, sure, sure. You gonna type it in your GPS? Yeah, fuck you, you shut up, I did fucking did. I know where I'm going. Hey, you don't know fucking shit. I'm gonna drive this. Oh, hey there. Oh, hey there, sir. You're driving a little fast, and this is the Canadian border with your Arizona license plate. H how'd you get here, sir? Man, I just... There's getting I lost. Can. And there's getting... I have set the dog now, too. There's... Ivan agrees. Um, I, I just... I don't feel bad for the old man because he had to have known what he was delivering. He had to have known. He had to. So, yeah, it's six hundred thousand cash and drugs. You know what you're doing. I don't know. Maybe he was a little distracted while he was yes. driving. Just a second. Bopper. Wait, bop. His. I still have a little lady down here too, Buffy. She's just looking at Ivan like, what are you barking for? I knocked on the desk as the cop. That's what set him off. So. Uh, all right. Next one. <laughs> it, could, could it be anything else? Could, could it fucking, fucking be anything? Man has meth charged after jumping on 15 roofs. Oh, he was on meth too at that point. In a row? An Allentown man. Parkour. <laughs> Parkour. Allentown. Parkour. Allentown man faces multiple charges after romping on rooftops in Summit Hill. Timothy Morales, Jr., 30, of uh, Union Boulevard, remains jailed in the Carbon County Correctional Facility following the hours-long rooftop standoff with police. Uh, according to papers, police were dispatched uh, just before 1 a.m. Sunday. When someone, for someone running and jumping on rooftops of homes. Okay, so multiple residents pointed to their roofs, stating they heard loud noises. Um, <coughs> police found Morales lying on a porch roof after a short search. Uh, the officer, who was familiar with Morales, spoke to him. They climbed to the top of the home. Morales refused to come down, saying... Spit on my da my grave. I will not come down and let you hurt me. Which is, oh. you're just going to yell at me. Um, <laughs> That is a brave heart statement quote. Just shouting on that hill. Making your stance. Morales then ran and climbed on 15 different homes. Police called for additional police for assistance. Commanded with Morales after cell phone. And after, after hours, Morales police peacefully surrendered. He was able to climb down using ladders placed by the fighter department. 15 roofs, and then you finally said, I've had enough. Time to come down. This uh, is why you don't smoke shit and go watch Spider-Man. Man, I was I was going to say, he had to have been on the meth. Man has meth charged after jumping on 15 roofs. He had to have had some of the meth and then might have like taken a little halftime break after seven or eight roofs. Got one more hit and then jumped another seven. Ugh. <laughs> I have I so I've woke I woke up with cats on the roof before. That's already disconcerting enough. But to just in the middle of the night, one fucking meth head. on a Sunday. A meth head like raving, spit on my <laughs> walking running around on the roof. On the fucking uh, roof. Uh, uh I, I I 
There has to be one ring camera on one of those houses. There has to be. Someone has to have footage of this. Someone do their justice and put it online. Now, what they don't clarify is, did he come down from a ha- Did he jump up on the roof and then come down and then jump up on the next one? Or was he just like, you know, hopping roof? To- was he fucking, you know, Spider-Manning it shit? You know what? You know what I think it is? I think it's the latter. I think it's jump. You know why? Because if it would have said in the headline, climbing 15 houses. Yeah. He didn't climb 15 houses. He jumped them, though. That's what Beast of the He climbed one, and then it was the floor is hot lava, and he jumped from roof to roof. Uh, look at and if he was on enough meth, he probably did see the floor is hot lava. Look at the channel. says, Tweaker on the Roof is the new Broadway hit. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I would see that, actually. Broadway production with that, with, like, the ground and the cops. Oh, that, that could actually be kind of fun. If I had a meth pipe. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, anyway. Uh, they, they got rid of Phantom. They got to do something in that theater. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> what the fuck? It just that, that, this that guy's is... got some. That guy's got some cardio. I'll give him that. He's in shape. It's a bad... I can't. I'm not jumping 15 roofs. They're gonna put this on my fucking tombstone. It's a bad drug. It's the worst yeah. fucking. Nothing good happens on meth. Yeah, the fact that this guy didn't end up with like a broken neck. You try to jump from roof 12 to 13 while high on meth. Now we get, that's a miracle. We get drunk driving. We get drunk fights. Okay. I don't hear too much about people doing shit when they're stoned. I'm sure someone has, but not a bunch. And they're probably pretty mellow about it. Yeah. Acid people just kind of just sort of stay somewhere tend to be. Yeah. They're physically contained by themselves and just their brain rots. Meth, jumping on the fucking roofs, man. Florida Spider Man, Florida Spider Man. <laughs> his meth senses are tingling, and he has to go from roof to roof. I wonder what his canon event was. Anyway, uh... <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you'll understand that joke. Uh... Um, <laughs> my meth senses. Are tingling. Anyway, uh... oh, but wait. Someone had to do more, and it's Florida. This is Sumter County. Uh, oh. Had to top that one. I don't even know if meth was involved here. Just really dumb. Well, if it was Florida, you would have a better chance. <laughs> Deputies, man crashes car, jumps out a window after attempted burglary. Try to follow what the hell happened here. Okay, I see images, but I don't see the video yet, so I'll try to follow along. A man in Sumter County is in the hospital after officials say he jumped from the second floor of a home that he crashed into and tried to burglarize. Residents from Sandalwood Condominiums and Wildwood called 911. Callers uh, told police that the driver of the car was breaking into multiple apartments. Identified the driver as 44-year-old Corey Payton. He rammed it twice. He came once and he hit it again. Witness uh, Keith Ketchum said. Sounded like somebody was trying to break in the house, so I ran to my son's room. Um, SWAT team responded. Seen and found Payton. Police say, deputies say Payton barricaded himself inside of another home on the second floor of the complex. He's accused of breaking in and trying to burglarize it. Um, Peyton then began threatening to shoot deputies, prompting the surrounding apartments to be evacuated. Members of the uh, sheriff's office were able to talk with Peyton through a window. Negotiators worked for seven hours, several hours to get Peyton to surrender peacefully. He allegedly jumped out of the window to the ground. (laughs) You know, when I think peace, I don't think that. Lot to unpack here. Number one, I think burglary, I think don't stealth. I think no one knows I'm in, get in, get out, nobody knows it, get shit, go. Quiet and in the night and you you learn to pick a lock. You don't just ram your fucking car into the house and make a hole. That's not how that works. Uh, then, when the cops show up, 
don't say you're going to shoot them. They yeah, don't like that. Should that should never be. No, as soon as you say that, more cops come really fast. They don't like that. They get they get a little antsy when you say you're going to shoot them. Uh, but finally, you're surrounded by cops. You're getting arrested. You're bleeding. What part of, you know what, I have a solution for this, was jumping out the goddamn window. Do you think he thought he was going to land it perfectly? Like, perfect landing, dismount, roll, and run? Yeah, I'm just going to fucking roll with it, and I'm going to go. They won't know it. Yes. Well, see, he's in the hospital. I don't normally do stories where people get hurt. He's not He's not going to be, he's not dying. He he'll goes down. Physically, he'll be fine. Mentally, it might be a lost cause for whatever state he's in to think he got this far. Also, this was the villages. Are you familiar with the villages in Florida? Oh, yes. Yes. That I'm just thinking of this area and that crowd of the villages, the wealthy retired crowd. And this is what's going on. But wait, it actually gets better. Peyton has an extensive criminal history and a total of 139 prior felony charges with 30 felony convictions. Deputies found Peyton's ankle monitor inside the home he broke into. They say he was on parole for burglary and previously violated it. So I do think he was trying to jump out the window with the ankle bracelet, bracelet torn off, leaving that behind so they couldn't track him. That was his brilliant move. Hundred, wait a minute, hundred thirty nine. Uh huh. And there's a person named Ketchum in yeah. this story. Yeah, there was a Ketchum. Yeah, he's trying to burglar them all. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it. Got, got to steal them all. Break in and up, breaking and entering. There has someone in the chat help out. There has to be some way to phrase that with Pokemon to tie it all perfectly. There has to be. Now, how? Uh, wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not a mathematician. I, I did not go to school for that. But I tend to think that after maybe the first two felony convictions, you might think to yourself, you know, I am not good at crime. You, you might consider that. Not, yeah. well, I'm going to try again. And you for a couple to, years in a row, you get to 30. I mean, bless your heart. Fake it till you make it, I guess. But that's not how this works. I have two thoughts on this. One, I mean, tomorrow there's someone going in for more felony charges. And he had pre-existing felony charges. Yeah. And it's going to be the big story. But two, related to this. At what point, how many felony charges do you have before they stop letting you be a free man? Especially when it does consider other people involved. This is not white collar crime. These are felony charges. People are involved. At what point did the judge go, well, you're on 27 right now. Three more, <laughs> and I might have to put you away. What? No. At it, what point do you say, don't let him outside at all? Last one this week. How the... All right, well, just, I, I don't have real good lead-ins this week because some of these are just like, some of these are shockingly odd and drug-induced and just beyond confusing. And for everyone involved, the police, the criminals, the, the overall area. <laughs> Billy Joel's song was arson soundtrack. So he did start the fire. <laughs> The song, We Didn't Start the Fire, was blasting from inside a Minnesota building that was set ablaze by the landlord. Go screw yourself, landlords. Landlords are already pretty bad as it is, and you're going to pull that up. Investigators allege that Travis Carlson, 37, burned a Duluth duplex last Thursday morning using gasoline extracted from his car. Carlson is being held in the county jail on $75,000 bail. Been charged with arson in the first degree. Uh, as detailed in the probable cause statement, uh, police officers were dispatched uh, following the 911 call. When first responders arrived, they saw the upstairs apartment in flames with we didn't start the fire blaring from the upstairs apartment. 
You know he was straight up dancing around, too. He was dancing to that song while the fire was going on. You know it. Ellison, who purchased the building in 2005, lives upstairs and rents the downstairs space of the property. Downstairs tenant told cops that he was awoken by the sounds of Carlson smashing glass and breaking things. They reported seeing Carlson wearing a helmet and smashing his own windows. Witness uh -huh. added that Carlson was under his truck with gas cans going in and out of the house before seeing a flash like a fireball come from the upstairs apartment. Here's the best part. The downstairs tenant told cops that after Carlson laid ruin to his own apartment for 20 minutes, he knocked on the tenant's door to announce the house is on fire. Literally, when it's too late to do anything about it, that's when you let your tenants know you are the worst landlord. Man, oh man. Just every single thing you could do wrong as a landlord and then some. Huh? Uh, what the fuck? Also, what? it says in the very first paragraph, it say the accused arsonist accused you th assume he did it? They have to. It's legal. They have to say. I get it, but oh, uh, 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 mother! What the fuck? If he also a drilled hole in the gas tank of the defendant's truck, that is straight up dangerous. That's beyond any type of arson at that point. Uh, uh, uh. So he was sitting there, listening to the river, and he got. He got to we didn't start the fire. He thought, well, you know. Oh, yes, I did. I've got this gasoline and some free time. Uh, two pages. <laughs> so I just, he set up the thing on fucking repeat. <laughs> Imagine you're the cops and you call pull up to the car to the house and you're like, wait a minute, that can't that fucking can't be. That's is fucking this guy is this guy trolling us? Is this guy fucking with us? What the fuck? Uh, Lids to gas cans laying on the ground by the truck. Additionally, the drill was found. Psycho half of the cordless drill. Try to get access to as much gas as he could yep. for his Billy Joel karaoke night. I uh, was was there any motive? Was there an actual? They're motive? suspecting drugs, which I'm suspecting meth. Yeah, everybody channels like meth. <laughs> yeah, his mugshot even looks like meth. Oh, what? I feel so. The fact that, like, the tenant got out okay, that's great, but now he doesn't have a home because of this idiot. Yeah. Ah, it's a fucking just... Well, I, it didn't say that he was damaged, but he was displaced. But still, what the... What the... What the fuck? Built in 1901, too. You took out over a 120-year-old building. It's dancing to Billy Joel with the gas jug like it's Grand Theft Auto. That fucking house survived a century. It survived uh, depression. It survived remod. It survived everything, but it couldn't survive this shithead. And where was this? Minnesota? Minnesota. How many, how, Duluth, Minnesota. How many cruel winters that house has probably seen, and it still stood? That might have even been a Sears house. <laughs> oh, did you know about this? In Sears used to They sell used to sell the pre, like, the manufactured ones? Yeah, the house kids. Is that it? They would sell yeah, 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 yeah. come in on like a train and you would go. And they would like, you, yep, they have instructions, like all the pieces there. Glorified, predated Ikea. Yep. But a house. Yeah, you, yeah. Had, you had to build it, but they have like, here's how you do it. Here's all the shit. You put... <laughs> Except don't, the... pour fire. don't pour fire in it, though. No, I don't know no. if the kids said that. No. It's just... We didn't. I don't. I hope Billy Joel. Who doesn't take this to heart the next time he has to play this in concert in Minnesota if he never does tour there again? Because that's going to set some flashbacks to people. Maximum 20-year prisons. Yeah, don't let him out. So what did we learn tonight? Well, uh, we learned landlords suck. Yeah. Land uh, it's, uh, it sucks that we have to find more reasons why they suck, but now we got them. I mean, say what you will about a corporate landlord, and I'm sure there's a lot to say. 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure the corporate landlord is not going to wake you up in the middle of the night with Billy Joel. House on fire. Bye. No. No. There are systems for that. That's what my thing in Florida was, a corporate landlord. Sometimes it takes a little long to get your stuff done, but I never had to worry about the safety of my own house going up in flame with dancing to the best of the 80s hits on Spotify. We learned that uh, being surrounded by cops, jumping out of a second floor window is not an escape plan. It's no. It, it's not even a plan. Is, is it even a plan? Is it really a plan? Do we still have America's Funniest Home Videos? Because, I, God damn. That would have been perfect. Anyway. Um, <laughs> with, like, the sound effects while he's jumping out, yeah. like a Mario jumping, like, boo -boo, sound effects. Yeah. We, uh, we've learned that um, anyone can be Spider-Man. The with drugs the guess. don't help, though. Yeah, that's true. I was gonna say, was that spider, that radioactive spider, also on meth when he bit this guy? Wouldn't it just suck if this is our <laughs> dimensions, Peter Parker? I was gonna say, is this our? This is like after 2020, we only get the bad versions of all the cool stuff. So like, this is our version of Spider-Man now. This is it's our just fucking Spider. Yeah, it's just it's a guy meth, on meth. It's meth-laced Spider-Man. Oh no. Um. We've learned that don't just rely on the GPS no. because, and maybe don't do the weed while you're fucking driving. Good God. There's a lot on that one too. Yeah. Like don't drive around in a car with $600,000 cash and drugs, just no matter where you're going and just the GPS. And if you know you're by a border, drive away because you know, there's going to be cops there. I have got super lost before some one time and if you know anything about south carolina you understand why this is weird i got like to spartanburg and we were planning on going to columbia so i have been super ass lost before i have never been a whole other goddamn country lost that's yeah. impressive yeah we have learned that uh someone else's construction equipment is not your uh uh chair ride I stand by. That barber is going to be mad. He is still standing on his front porch stomping his foot. And finally, once again, we have learned that uh, the internet was a mistake. Yes. Um, I, that's a lesson we learn every day. I, I propose well, I propose we get rid of all this shit and just go back to ham radio the way God intended. I would like to think that's possible. But then it's going to, like, I don't know what the Reddit version and all the awful troll versions would be on ham radio. All now. Try to join their forces and voices on there now. It would just be a channel of one guy with a microphone up to his butt farting all night. Yeah. Yes, night. actually. And it would be yes. the most popular thing on the people, fucking radio. And people would tune in every day every because day. they think it's edgy and think it's smart. Is this what we've evolved to? Is this all we get now? Those are our options. Okay, you don't want the internet? You don't want Twitter? Fine. You get Fart Ham Radio. I made myself sad. 